class we're going to be doing a new project that's dealing with texture and drawing which is pretty interesting and just want to talk to you guys a bit about it and kind of introduce this is going to be a creative project also but using still um, different ideas about uh, observation and things like that as well so when we think about texture and drawing we think a lot about and it's important to realize we're talking about marks that you're making on the surface. Pretty obvious, but the way you make the mark, how you draw it, how much pressure you put on your pen or pencil or whatever you're using, how quickly you do it, the angle you do it at, the feeling. You can't do this so much pressure with this, but if you push harder, it makes a darker mark. If you let go, uh, put it, touch down the paper to lightly and then let go at the end, it makes different types of marks. So we're talking about texture, we're talking about the accumulation of marks. Now, we can make them on the paper and the paper has a sort of texture of its own. And then as well as um, the way our pen or pencil interacts with it. So certain types of mediums like charcoal, has a different feeling on the paper than say one of these type of pens, right? So there's a lot of different factors. But when we're looking in the world at this, we could say, how do we see texture? How do we actually see it? What is it that makes us able to see texture? It's gonna have to be the same answer as seeing everything else, right? Light. But what what is what is it that we're actually seeing in texture when we see it? We could feel with our hand, and we know these things feel a certain way. What we're seeing is the way the light is reacting with the surface or the material that it is, right? If it's smooth, the light bounces even back at our eye and gives us a highlight. We've talked about this before. If it's rough, then we're getting different types of shadows because different objects, or we could insert here, another word which would be materials absorb a different amount of light right they um things that are very very shiny or metallic they reflect light they don't really take it in whereas dirt and concrete things like that take it all in almost some of the rocks and concrete reflect a bit right so it's all different and this is could be studied in physics how color is um, projected out of that uh, the frequency of, of well, light light waves and how they move and, and everything like that. Um, we're not going to get into that, but we've talked about this already by talking about local color and how you pull out, um, make something a tone, and then you add darker and lighter parts. So this kind of ties into our, our conversation about um, shading and stuff like that and color. It's an interesting area where if you take 2D design with me, we could talk about this more fully but you know the hue families and how saturated the color is there's a lot of qualities to it but the main thing i want you to know is that you know color has value to it and we're adding value onto our paper right every one of these lines that we have adds value if you build it up so you're adding value to your paper and you're trying to match some of the values in the things you're drawing, correct? So we see a light, we see because of light, and we see the way the minute little reflections and things are. This is some of these images are from the book Drawing Realistic Textures in Pencil, where the idea is. Um, an example of the difference between something that had a texture as a cube and something that was not textured, right? All these areas are indentions, they're creating little shadows and things. And this even the actual grain of something, like the actual color of it, there's actual grain. So like color shifts are happening that give us a feeling of texture as well, like in the wood down here. So that kind of ties into our conversation about local color. Okay. So there's different, how do you think texture of an object is more impaired depending on the amount of light that is striking it? Well, the answer would be yes. How does the angle of the light affect the texture? Well, if it's far down on the side, you'll have a shadow and the texture may not be as apparent, right? 
push straight on, you might be blasting it so much you can't see any of the little changes as much. So that, and how does light show indentions? By small little reflection, like little reflections, and also where there's gaps or also little indentions, there's a shadow in them, right? So there's an old technique for um, exploring texture, right? It's called direct rubbing. You take a piece of paper, your newsprint will work really well for this, so I recommend using your newsprint. Use, use the newsprint. The newsprint. And also, you will use compressed charcoal. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a demo video of doing this outside something in my house. But you get the idea. You're going to use newsprint and compressed charcoal. And then what you're going to do is take it out into the world somewhere and secure the piece of paper secure the piece of paper to the object or surface rub it with your choice of media compressed charcoal the broad side of it works best in my experience, that's the longer side. The lighter the weight of the paper, the more texture transferred, but also easier to tear, so be careful, have fun. Go out into the world and do that. And then if you do different type of thickness of paper, it would change how much it would show a lot. And if you do the broad side of it, you'll get better. Why is it going to work? Because it's going to pick up all the um, texture, literally, and wherever it's raised, it's going to give you a mark on your surface, right, with the actual side of the charcoal. How else do people use texture in drawings? There's expressive ways and conceptual ways. This is an example of something that's pretty expressive and interesting conceptually. It's made by this guy here, Chuck Close. It's called Fanny Finger Painting 1985, oil paint directly applied with fingerprints. And this is how he produced the image, one after the other of his fingerprints. Now you say, why would he bother to do that? Why would he ever paint it that way? Well, what does your fingerprint have? Texture, yes, but also what does it stand in for? let you think about it for a second. It stands in for identity, right? And DNA and who you are because they're unique to each person. And so by making an image of someone he is related to by marriage but still related to with his personal thumbprint fingerprints, he is creating this kind of connection between himself and the subject in a different way that's very interesting conceptually, right? And it creates a really interesting value every time he attaches, he puts his fingerprint onto the surface, it's creating value, right? It's adding it, and so he's using it to paint with, in quotes. So that's one way someone used texture expressively. Another artist I find really interesting is David Hammonds. He's a black artist, um, and he did a bunch of these drawings with um, basketballs on paper where he's using them to build up the activity. Um, you can see down here is like asphalt. So pretty strong commentary about maybe different neighborhoods and urban growth in the city, things like that. And also very beautiful, feel like outdoor night sky type of things going on and they're installed with sculptural elements. So that's using texture by applying it to the ball to create an image by the activity of it. Very interesting. Some of these also ones he's really famous for are he coats himself with grease or pigment then uses his own body to create an impression. Um, they function as standalone. They also serve as records of his markings of his gesture and his process. So this is very 
very good work about um, dealing with being pressed, compressed, hitting a ceiling, hitting so onto something, not being able to go past. Actually, the, what he's showing is the body in a certain type of way. All of this happening through texture and the way that is whatever he's wearing or something is coating onto the paper. So it's very interesting. Um, you're going to be doing a project where you're going to be creating your own cave and creating, creating a cave of texture. And then on top of it, you're going to be drawing things that you care about. Um, on it as if you were living in ancient times, Paleolithic times. So let's talk a bit about cave art. One of the old famous caves um, from long ago is in the Pyrenees Mountains in France. There's a lot of these caves. This one is called Les Lacau. It's right here in the center of France. This is kind of the area it was found in, really beautiful. And it's in the ground, obviously caves go into the ground. And inside of it is one are these famous cave drawings from Paleolithic era before there was even writing. Um, and this is called the Hall of Running Bulls. So there's these bulls that are running into this space and it almost feels like they're going up a hill or in this space because they use the cave in a particular way. So you want to think about the textures you pick. They were these ancient artists were doing this with really simple things like ash and other really ground pigments, simple pigments. And so in a way you're kind of not that different from them. You're using something simple, but you're not drawing it on an actual cave wall. You're creating your own cave wall. These were made by the people because they had they have different ideas about them. They're not sure because it wasn't writing, but one of the ideas is that um, something called hunting magic, which is to capture the image of an animal. So drawing it here means that in some way you'll capture the animal in real life. So it would be a way of being successful in the hunt. Because back in this Paleolithic era, you're talking about survival by hunting and gathering. So this um, is very, very important. And so there's an idea that they had some kind of maybe shamanistic religions um, and they had like also some rituals that they would do in these places as a rite of passage. So very beautiful works though for something so old. It shows this sort of delicate line and interesting detail. There's reindeer in these caves. But you can see how they're working with the texture of the cave wall and the way they're applying it. This one's called Chinese Horse. Um, it's not because it's actually Chinese, it's just the name of it. Because it has a quality that's something like some types of Chinese brush painting. So it's stylistic rather than actually Chinese. Um, and they have these wheat pieces here. And there's some idea that the horse could be pregnant. So this is the idea of fertility and needing to have their animals you know animals reproduce to be able to live and survive and this area is left blank has a very beautiful quality to it so there's one here even of a man who's been wounded in a, in a fight with a bison to try to kill a bison so that's pretty pretty interesting very simplistic in a way but this is one of the earliest depiction of a person compared to the bison has even more detail. So they care more about showing that than themselves. And they're all over these caves. There's a number of these ones throughout the France and different parts of the world. Really basic sort of calligraphic quality line in charcoal a lot of times. These ones are interesting because they show the real age of it. How it's these concretions and stalactite stalagmites are in the cave, even some of them over the drawings that take so long to build up, so it's not a hoax or something like that. I think um, in these are some sort of wondrous idea that I'm trying to get across. And when you do this, you're going to go through the process firstly of building up 
the texture on the paper and then you're going to be drawing your own objects that would be important to you in your cave. So these are some student examples where they texture the paper first and then draw objects on them. Um, things that would be in their cave. This one has a jacket, sketchbook, their pet turtle, iPod, umbrella, they like weather, some of their technology. This is an interesting one. There's friends and a car trip and nature. Um, this was her first one. Her second one had herself and then her hand sort of and then this idea of the artist brush. I like this one a lot. It's pretty interesting. They made an actual door area like you're entering into something and inside of it you have different type of things on each side. This is the door that you're entering. And then on one side there's idea of travel, exploration, the moonscape, city and country. It's interesting how it pops out. This is one of somebody's or they, they kind of did it in three. It, I wanted them to do three separate pieces of paper, but they didn't. But it's stuff that they're into, comics, you know, um, planets, Disneyland, if you see here is actually Disneyland, the castle kind of going on right over here that's disney felix the cat is that i can't remember all some you have over here animals from nature sea turtle lion and then planetary things so that's really interesting too um you got different options but you've got to think about how you place it and i think this one Came really geometric, but it works pretty well. Um, about this is about the tsunami in Japan, I believe someone was dealing with, and then the idea of mountains and things, and this kind of interesting interaction in the surface. The things that you draw on there, I want you to draw them from life or from observation. Like even these characters are observed through. You can use pictures and things like that. They don't necessarily have to be photorealistic because in the cave we're not dealing with that but they do need to be naturalistic based off of light a uh, life i should say this is you know an abstracted version of a cow in a painting this is a photo photograph of one so there's a difference between icons and symbols right we don't want anything in there to be like a symbol which is like you know a symbol being something that stands in for something else completely like the word What's he going to draw, you say? Ant. Okay. A and T are sounds that stand for the animal, right? That's not what we're looking for. We're not looking for anything in that realm of symbol. Okay. But, and we're not looking for anything even in this realm of symbol that looks like things like this. or this. These are all symbols that mean things because we've decided that that is equated with something, right? We're not doing that. You can't have something that's a little bit more of an icon. Simple resembles what it stands for, but I don't even, I want you to be careful not even to get to this level of icon. It needs to be living somewhere between the two, which means closer to actually being from life. This is maybe the picture of someone. This is more of a simplified version. You want to go more towards this side, not down to there. You know, we're not looking at things. We want enough detail to be able to feel like it has some naturalism and reality to it. So I'm going to be doing some demo videos of doing um, texture on sheets and things like that. But to start with, what you're going to do is take your pieces of paper outside Get, tear them up possibly if you need to get a couple of them and then do some rubbings like that and then do some brainstorming and sketching and thinking through like we talked about in our last slideshow about um, what you're going to want to do and this is what you're going to do there's a project sheet and turn in here that has all this you're going to make a triptych that's three drawings 
all of them need to be oriented the same direction. So that's like this, they're all portrait. On 18 by 24 white drawing paper, paper with charcoal. You can use ink and white contoured charcoal if you want, but charcoal is going to work the best. Both types, the pencil and the um, and the compressed charcoal. You want to do use the texture sheets to decide on objects that texture each sheet of paper. But you're going to use these other ones you did to test it out to see which textures you will want to use. So this part up here. When I'm talking about doing rubbings, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to figure out textures you want on your paper, but you're doing a couple lighter weight paper ones to figure out what you like. Just some tests with um, newsprint. So you're going to texture each sheet of paper. You can decide on what you want to put in there, things you're interested in, and reference them from life or pictures. Draw them on the paper like images in the Lakau cave. Okay, so you can be creative in your design. You want to think about what you're paying attention. They used to just add these over the top of each other. So their art was serving a purpose of this image hunting magic more than actually an overall design. You can see how they're adding them. Sometimes you feel like they're adding them purposely, like they're running uphill here. Sometimes they're just over the top of each other. I think you need to think about where you put things. You may want to sketch them on a scrap piece of paper and make them into icons, or you can draw them realistically. I don't really want you to um, make them into full icons. This is something that I used to let people do, and I still do if we're in class together, but I want you to try to draw them, draw them on the realistic side. They can be somewhat icons, but you definitely need to plan it out on scrap paper not scrap paper in your sketchbook and then experiment with erasing out adding in layers fixing down charcoal and drawing on top you can use a razor blade to scratch it out add more texture from other objects so some of these things this one they just added the texture and then drew them and added some white contacrain to take it out this one they did a lot of the same type of thing but they used silhouette in the layout interestingly this one here, they actually added the texture and then went in and erased it out with like those torlins and things like that, added more white. Here, they experimented with the idea of actually making a door into like the cave or the other world, which is really interesting. So there's different ways to do it. This person, they used like um, the natural feeling of a grate. If you see here and below it all, is like a grate that has geometry on it and then they added more geometry over the top so using white charcoal to do that so pretty interesting stuff you can do with this um this section originally i wanted to try to show you a bit of a video about um by warner Horst herzog called cave of forgotten dreams but um the way i showed it they didn't like it on youtube so they cut it out but i think if you watch the documentary that i put in um there instead which would be under your class right here um documentary about cave painting in spain instead it'll give you the idea i wanted just to show you guys the kind of stuff you could see when you go onto this link, it'll have you log into Films on Demand, which is you get access to as being a college student. I wanted to show you this. It's an older documentary. The other one was newer, and that's why I wanted to show it to you because it was um, a bit more fresh. But it's okay. Um, YouTube didn't like it, so that's how it is. So, all right. Uh, hopefully, it all makes sense to you guys what's going on here with this stuff, and then. This is going to be a jump cut to the next section where I keep talking about um, this project. The idea of how important these kind of places would have been for these people so that when you're picking what you put on your cave wall, you're thinking about that as part of the idea. That The idea being to pick things that you actually care about, not just random things. So, you know, in those caves, in those places, 
they actually would spend a lot of time and energy going in there because it, it's not like they had modern technology. And they said, like it said, that they actually um, had a cliff collapse in front of the other one. So they had, you know, they had reasons why it was so well preserved and it maybe wasn't, wouldn't have been quite so difficult to get inside of. But nonetheless, it would have been still pretty difficult. So there's like a reason why this area was important to the people. Pont Arc, Pont Arc was a natural formation that would have been invisible even way back then. And this is that road they went along. They found this, you know, these limestone caves perfectly preserved it. And they have this whole crazy walkway. This is Warner Herzog's team going through. You can't ruin this stuff. Inside of it, there's like things that almost feel proto-cinematic because the way the light hits it. And this is something like, for example, the panel of horses, the kind of detail they're using. Things like the charcoal mediums you would use to smear and to draw the line work. And so I want you to think about why would they do that because they're caring about their hunting. You know, they're caring about this ritual of survival that's connected to them with survival. The type of pigments they use, you know, ground things from the earth in a way probably not that much different than us. And they did a lot of things where they would sign the work, so to speak, and be recognized by these things with handprints. They put their hand down and then spit through a tube, a bone tube with pigment all around it, would land on the wall and it would leave a copy of their hand. And so there's a certain person that they found throughout the whole cave way back into it who has a particular type of finger and they found him as a person throughout the whole cave. So you kind of have a really interesting thing when you're looking at these. You have to think this is a person's work from so long ago. And I think I think I want you to really just um, contemplate that, what you're going to put on those and, you know, have something interesting to you and inspirational maybe. Um, so it can reflect that rather, reflect something about you as a person, what you care about, rather than just um, be whatever random thing. And I like this one especially for that reason because it kind of shows particular people, car trip with a particular car, a place they would go as a sort of thing in their cave, right? So that's what I'm trying to talk to you guys about. All right, um, look to the demo video. So watch this to kind of get some brain juices flowing. And then I'm going to show you some demo videos on texturing um, paper and getting your paper ready. And then... I want you to especially think about which direction you want your images to be so they're all the same. This is really important. You don't want one to be landscape and then the other two to be um, portrait. This is going to help you make them feel like they belong together and are unified. The three drawings are like one piece of artwork all together. So this is your final project you're going to be working on and we'll be using um, discussion boards and things to talk about it and I'll post other things but I just want you guys to get started thinking about it brainstorming some stuff like we talked about before with brainstorming you're like well what do you do for brainstorming well you kind of think okay you put something in a circle in the middle and then you you know write in it You write in there like whatever it is the cave okay and then what do you do well after that you take some lines off of there and you go okay what's going to be in my cave what's important to me right well i would put things like um my sons my wife, my family, right? So I'll be like, okay, what do I say? So would I, like, my family is important to me, right? So I would put that on there. So I would put family, okay, over here. Why is this not working? Sorry, guys. Family, right? Oh, man. I'm having a bit of a technical problem here with my mouse and my keyboard so i think you might get the idea though here let's say you want to put something over here 
you say family, right? And then you add picture imagery out of that. You want to get to the point where you're getting like specific um, imagery. So it's not just like, you don't want to just end with something that says family. You want to end with something that says portrait of my wife. That's a specific person, right? How do you visualize family? Well, you can do it this way. Or you can say, uh, what does the family do together? Cook food. Okay, well, what food? In my family, they bake. we bake pies at holiday. So that could be an image. Actually, a family, the idea of family could be maybe a picture of a particular person. And maybe baking pies at holidays all can show that. Instead of just saying family, well, there's no image around family. What do you have? You can't draw anything for that, right? So you need something. But a pie at the holidays, that I can draw <laughs> really badly with my freehand mouse. Steam coming out of the pie tin. Oh, that's terrible. That looks like a steaming pile of something else besides a pie. <laughs> Nonetheless, you get the idea. This is not a good program for drawing in. It's not like Photoshop or anything, it's just on the slide production. So I want you guys to get to some kind of specific imagery so that you know what to put on the cave. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So you want to do some planning and thinking about that. So, you know, I want you guys to think about what it is that you're trying to do, right? And that's going to take a little bit of time. You're not going to be able just to oh get it all done right away. You're going to actually have to think about your design process. I just remind you that when we're doing design process, we want to go through research, which you've been talking to me about this so-called in quotes talking by watching this. And you're going to want to look at some pictures, think about some stuff, then have little sketches that get to a final sketch. So this is the idea of brainstorming. I'm seeing here family, generations, connections. Well, that doesn't do circle, handwriting. That gets more specific. But nonetheless, it's getting a little boring. Some of these things don't really work. So you got to get more specific with it and say, what does connection look like? What does connection look like? Well, think about it for a second with me. You have to go even further than that and say, handshake. Right? That's a specific thing. What else does connection look like? Um, hugs. Right? There's, so you need to get specific with your imagery so that you get like a feeling of a specific thing you can't actually draw. You can't draw connection or love, but you can draw someone kissing. Right? So these are the ideas that I'm trying to give you. I'm trying to make you understand that you need to get to specific imagery because it will help you out a lot. And then you want to do some small sketches like we talked about before and go through this research, developing initial sketches, and then you want to get final sketches. This is work by um, Pushpin Studios for Nicholas Nickleby um, Broadway show, but you're going to you're gonna be doing your final sketches that you want to have, right, and working in a way that's really intentional. This is for laying, laying out a live area, which is when you do comics and things, you don't need to worry about that. But the point is to go through the process to get to something that's finalized. Okay, so you wanna make sure you're doing that with this project. You have two weeks to do it, which is quite a lot of time, but you have three big, big pictures to do, right? So you have three of them, two weeks. You want to get the textures worked out, get your ideas worked out, and then you have time to execute all three of them. Um, you want to post and things and keep me up to date so I know where you're at with things and um, can check in on you. All right. Um, no reason to be too overly concerned because you have enough time. You have actually more than two weeks because it's the seventh is when this you technically can start as soon as you um, find out about this today. But the seventh is when the block city block is due, and then you have um, up until the end of like towards Thursday and finals week. So that's 
plenty of time and you have your class time and what would have been your class time and your homework time for this so I think you're going to be able to do some really awesome creative things that's um, that are interesting to you and that you actually care about and kind of more creative using observation and drawing to make things you are interested in in that way so please email or comment with questions and we'll create an in-process dialogue um, conversation for you to post things and talk about each other's work all right take care guys